In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, in today's gospel, we are facing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, tired from the, the journey that they took from Jerusalem. While going to Galilee, they had to go through Samaria. It's today's West Bank. So imagine mountains, desert, and as we see from the gospel, it was about six hours. It's afternoon when the heat burns you literally. And they had to go through that. And here we are seeing his human side. He was tired and thirsty. So not like other so-called Christians are saying that he had only one nature. He had two because here, as, a, as God, he could quench his thirst. But he wanted to show us that he is one of us. He's like me and you, like everyone. And while they got there to the will of Jacob, he sat down in the shade, and the disciples went to the city to buy food. In the meanwhile, while he was sitting there alone, a woman from the city comes, to draw some water. And he's asking her to give him a drink. But she was very indignant. How dare you, being a Jew, you're asking me, a Samaritan woman, to give you a drink? Don't you know that there is it's a conflict between, between us? And Jesus Look at the patient and love he had. With such a love, woman, if you knew the grace of God, and who is he that is asking, you would ask him to give you the living water. She paid attention to these words. So wait a minute. Are you greater than Jacob? Because our father Jacob, he did this, he dug this, this uh, well, and he drank himself, his sons, and his cattle. Are you greater than him? Look at you, you don't have anything. You don't have a bucket, you don't have uh, a core, whatever, to, to, to get the water, and it's very deep. And this discussion, it's very important. It's hiding a lot of information, a lot of details. So just let's take only the situation with the will, with the water. So when he's telling her about the living water, what is that? That is the grace of the Holy Spirit. That Whoever receives it, literally, it's, it quenches your thirst forever. Like we have had through the centuries so many cases as the thief on the cross, just one word, and his thirst was quenched. Saul, which became Paul, the apostle, of nations, one touch, and he was completely transformed. And many others. I am one, one of those as well. I didn't know God before, <clears throat> before he appeared and called me to the priesthood. I was living a life singing giving concerts and stuff like that. 
I didn't have anything in common with the, with God and church. But he transforms you completely. It's, it's such an amazing thing when you get to taste this living water. You became a different person. So, and this is what he's talking about. And the will itself, what is that? Is the holy gospel, which is very deep. If you look, you open it, it's really hard to understand. That's why she said, it's deep. You don't have anything to draw water with. But he didn't need, because he is the source. He, he didn't need anything to get the water, because he is the source. He is the giver of that water. He is that fountain. See what is hiding? When, when you listen, you think just about that. The water, he was thirsty as a human, yes. But it's much more than that. It's much deeper than that. When we are looking and analyzing everything. So, and their discussion goes even deeper. She is asking him, I see uh, we, we are saying that the right place to worship God is here on uh, Mount, Mount Sikhar. Sikhar. But you, the Jewish, you are saying that it's in Jerusalem. And he's saying that neither here nor in Jerusalem, but the true worshipers of God will worship God in truth and spirit because God is spirit, right? So again, he is making this paraphrase to show us the Holy Spirit. Because as Orthodox Christians, we, we are not worshiping idols. Because this is what pretty much was the uh, situation with the Samaritans. Because he's saying that you worship what you don't know. We worship what we know, right? So the Samaritans, they were considered idolaters. Even though there was a group that were followers of Jacob, but still there was the largest group was idolaters. So, and uh, he's pointing to her when he asked her to bring her husband. She said, uh, I have no husband. And he said, you said it right because you had have five till now, and the one that you are with right now is not your husband either. So, and we can think that he was talking about only that as the Sadducees, uh, with the example with the woman that had all the brothers and she had no offsprings, right? Because that's why exactly. But there are, th this example are also metaphorical. These five husbands that she had had in the past are our five senses that we are living with, with throughout our life, right? So, and we are putting them aside and we are left alone. And with what we're living now, again, is not ours. So we just are focused on the material, not on the spiritual life. So that's why we are alone. So you see the connection right now. And another thing that the Holy Fathers are connecting this is the covenant of God. The first given in the paradise to Adam and Eve. Second to Noah. So, and going through all this to the the circumcision of Abraham and the fifth, the, the sixth one is the law of Moses. So which even they had to go through all of that and even now, even they had the law, they didn't really accomplish anything with it. They were just 
having something like a letter, right? Oh, yeah, it's there, it's nice, but we are living our way. So, and unfortunately, as Orthodox Christians, we're not far away from that. Because we are living pretty much, yes, we have the commandments, we have the law, we have the mysteries of God that is established in the Orthodox Church, and yet, we are not living with them. See? What is missing is missing God, our faith, the truth and spirit that he is talking, the living water that he is talking about. So this is what is missing from our lives, my dear ones. But in order to get that living water, we have first to open our hearts. You see this woman, even though she was from Samaria, even though she had had five husbands and she was living with the sixth one right now, but she was open. When she saw and heard his words, she was so open. She didn't keep even that only for herself, but she ran into the city and tell the people, come, I think I found Messiah, right? Even he opened plainly to her, saying that I'm here when she asked, I know that Messiah, the one that is called Jesus, will come and he will teach us. And he said, I am he. So, but she wanted the people themselves to get this taste that she had. She already opened, she already received that water. And now, rivers of living water was going through her body, through her soul. And she wanted to share it with the others. Not keeping it only for herself, but sharing. So this is what we as Orthodox Christians have to do. Whenever we receive the grace of God, the spirit of God, the truth, the love, we have to share it with others. That's our duty. Going into the world, baptize and make disciples of all nations. This is the, the meaning. This is what we shall do. Not think, oh, you know, we're a small group, we're a minority, you know, America is big, and what? They were only 12. And look, throughout the world, it's everywhere. So do not think like that. Do not be scared. Take courage. Be like Saint, this Saint Fortini, which is equal with the apostles. Go out there and share your testimonies with, God, with the people, the testimonies that you receive from God. And I'm pretty sure that each one of us and everyone has something to share. Right? So you see, when we are looking in just one gospel, there is so many things. Worship God in the truth and spirit. See, the prayer that, w that we are giving as a communication with God, because this is what prayer is. It's not just sitting there and reading something and I'm done. No, it's your communication. You're talking with God through the prayer. That's what, that's what prayer is. It's not just, okay, I have to do my, my duties, my prayer, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm done, I did it. No. The true prayer comes from the heart, the bottom of our heart. Which if you want to receive this living water, then it has to come from your heart. And then you'll see the results of it as he's talking to his disciples in continuation. When they came from the city and they saw him talking with this woman, they, were, they, they didn't like it. But no one said they say the word. In their mind, they said, what you're doing, why are you talking to her? But they didn't say anything. Instead, they said, I have some, something to eat. And he said, I already ate. They thought in, for themselves that the woman or somebody else from the city brought him something. But he is making it clear that I ate the food that you don't know, my food is to do the will of my father, the one that had sent me. That's my food, 
all right? How many times did we think like that, that our food is to do the will of God? Because we are his children. We are his followers. Are we doing the will of God? Or are we just doing our will to quench our bodily thirst? Right? With, with the temporary water, as you drink, drink, and drink, and again you want to drink, right? Sometimes we felt this, especially living in Florida with this uh, humidity. You drink, drink, and never <laughs> quenches your thirst, right? So, but he, he's talking about the true water. So, are we receiving it? And they are taking it even further because he is warning them now after he planted the seed in the heart of this woman to so look up now that the seed is planted get ready to bring together the crops because there are many he was showing them the results that would come from just a short discussion that he had with that woman. And she believed, and the entire city believed. In the beginning, they believed her word, that he told me everything what I ever did. But after they asked him to stay with them, after they said, no, we do not believe only because of your word, but because we heard him, right? So they received themselves the water, the living water and they quenched their thirst. And now the disciples, they just had to put together the crops, right? To gather the crops, the result, the fruits. So this is what we are doing. Our forefathers, our grandparents, parents, they planted the seeds. And now we have to gather together the crops. But we have ourselves to plant. So the next generations, those that are sitting in front of us today, those generations, they would have to gather their crops and they will have to plant their fruits and so on and so forth. This is the continuation that never stops. So we have to work, continue working because the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, never stops working. As Jesus said, my father is still working. I'm working and my father is still working. So, and we, as the children, we have to be of help, not be lazy. And when we are asked to follow and do his work, oh, we're busy with earthly things, right? We don't have time to respond to the high call. Because remember, when he, when he invited the people to his son's wedding, one bought animals and had to try them, another bought land, another got married. So we always are finding excuses and we're trying to cover ourselves and give the responsibility to somebody else. But we are responsible, each one of us, for everything we are doing and even for each word we are saying. So, my dear ones, let us receive this living water through the church because the church is that place where, where we can find the will, right? Right over there on the holy table, the holy gospel. And the church is that area where that will with living water is, that through the mysteries of the church through the Holy Communion, especially, and repentance gives us this life eternal, quenches our thirst, cleans our heart, and may, is making it, it ready to receive Christ in our hearts. So let us continue cleaning and opening our heart to receive this living up water and receiving life eternal. Amen. God bless you all. Christ is risen.